Rub up your engines! Now this is a Blackview Android phone, but they work in conjunction with FLIR, which is a big instrument company. It's got an infrared camera built in with all the software. My FLIR, we'll turn it on. It's a full infrared camera. It has the reading, I put it in Fahrenheit. Let's open the hood and check it out. Now to a normal human eye, it looks like a regular engine, but now when you look at an infrared, check it out, you can see how hot the exhaust is, how cool the side is. This is a fascinating tool. It has various modes, but me, I like this iron mode. It's got the reading in the middle what you're pointing at, and the brighter it is, the hotter it is. So the blue is cooler, the yellow is the hottest, and just as you move it around, you can easily see the temperature by the reading of that particular area that's right in the middle. Now you can move it around, you can play around with this forever, but I like having it in the middle, then I know the reading's in the middle and I'll point the middle at it. Now you might think, what good is infrared information to me while working on a car? Heat has to do with everything on a vehicle. Let's say you think you got a bad radiator. You can check it all up and down, inside and out. See if it has hot spots, meaning that parts of it clogged up parts of it aren't clogged up. For example, let's say you think your radiator's clogged up. What you will find is where the clogged area is, that's going to show cooler because it's clogged and the coolant isn't passing through to dissipate heat. So you find that one part is cooler, other parts are hotter, you know your radiator's clogged up and it's time to either replace it or flush it out. You might think, hey maybe your brakes are dragging. You can do the temperature readings of the brakes, compare them, and if you find that one side's a lot hotter than the other, you know, that side's dragging. And you can check for restrictions any part of the cooling system with these in a snap. Let's say you think your thermostat's bad. Well, that would mean that the thermostat was stuck closed and not opening, making overheat. So you just look at the thermostat with this. And if you see that the engine is a lot hotter than the thermostat housing and the hose coming out going to the radiator, you'll know it's clogged right there because it goes from heat to a lot less heat and you just change the thermostat. It beats taking things apart and replacing parts just guessing. And let's say you got a misfiring engine. You can look at the engine while it's running. And if you find that the temperature isn't the same for all four cylinders, you know there's a problem in the one that's either hotter or colder than the other ones. Since it's color coded, hey, you can see that fast. And it's also great for electrical work. Say you got an electrical short. Guess what? You get a short, generally it puts out heat. So you can take this, look at the fuse box. We'll pull the top off, take a look at it. And what do we find? We find one part is glowing yellow hot. Check it out. You can see right there, that's glowing yellow hot. That means that circuit has a problem. Infrared imaging. It's gone a long way. Used to be you had to buy a special gun or a special adapter for your phone. This baby, this Blackview has it built right in. Simple. You don't have to plug something in. You don't have to set something up. Here it is. And of course, not only is it an excellent phone, but it's a great Android. As you can see, I put on diagnosis systems. Plug in, you can use it to analyze your car too. And I have to say, it's a pretty good phone. It's waterproof, got a really nice indestructible cover built in. You don't have to buy a cover or anything. The phone's in here, it's all built together. And it has a killer camera, 48 megapixels. So, you're working on a car. You can't see something. You can stick under here. Then, you can see if there's a leak somewhere. You can see if wiring is shorted out inside just by using it as a camera. Because even all Scotty here, you're working on a car, you take it apart, then you go, oh, where did that go? I don't remember how all those parts go back on, right? Take a picture of it. Hey, with 48 megapixels, you can blow that up with your finger to heart's content. You can refer back. Gee, where did those wires go? You look at the picture, oh, they go right there. Take a picture before you work on the area, while you're working on the area, then you'll know exactly where everything goes. Now going back to the thermal camera aspect, you can also check catalytic converters. Watch this. We'll go under the car. There's the catalytic converter. And we'll look at it. 
with the thermal camera. We can check temperature ratings to make sure it's working correctly. As you can see, it is glowing a lot hotter, especially in the back. It should be hotter in the back than in the front. And if you look at the readings, it definitely is. If you had a dead cat, it'd be the same temperature the whole thing. It wouldn't be getting hotter in the back because it's not working. It's also great for finding leaks. The fluid is hotter than the air, right? So you run the engine and whatever's leaking, transmission, power steering, just follow this and if you see little streams of heat coming out you know it's leaking right there and then you'll find where the leak is now if you would have told me years ago that i'd be using a handheld phone to both analyze the car with software and to do thermal infrared imaging to find faults i think you were reading a science fiction novel but not anymore and with this FLIR system if you want to do a little research research the FLIR company f-l-i-r i got FLIR equipment from years ago that cost thousands of dollars well now they're putting that real expensive technology into these android phones and nothing beats the instant on you can immediately put it to use you don't have to have extension cables and a special battery for the sensor it's all built into the phone now the processors of these phones used to be slow as hades years ago i got some of the add-on infrared sensors that you plug in the bottom you had to charge the battery of that separately take a while to set itself up and then once it did the readings were not instantaneous there was a big time lag between you pushing it and seeing it then when you move the camera it had to reset itself and start doing the readings this is pretty much instantaneous you see a temperature one area you move it over see what the other is and like i said i like having a dot in the middle of the thing because then i know the temperature readings right in the middle i just have to center the middle on what i want to read i mean look at that you move it over here 216 it goes up this is really quick reading it is really good for taking fast readings i have to say some of the early thermal imaging devices i tried out hey they were more like fancy toys this is not a toy this is a serious instrument and of course its use is limited only by your imagination i used this the other day in a house to trace down an electrical short in the 120 volt system anything that puts out heat this is going to pick it up maybe you're looking for your cat at night and can't find it well there's kitty you can't hide from heat cats hotter than the porches <laughs> it's also great for finding worn bearing noises let's say you got a bad bearing that's making a noise but you can't figure out which one it is just start looking around a bad bearing is making noise because the bearing is now wearing out the noise is one aspect of what comes out but it's also going to put out heat because the metal bearings are wearing a lot of times the grease is gone they're worn they're spinning making howling noises they're going to put out heat too and when you go and look at this and you see gee the outside of the alternator where the bearing is you see it's really getting hot the bearing's gone on the alternator and of course it works with cool things too like your air conditioning system you can just look at your air conditioning system quickly scan all the parts you can see what the temperature is one part is cold and then all of a sudden it stops and it's not cold anymore you know right at that point there's some kind of restriction that's keeping the refrigerant from flowing and since this is mechanic money i'll be giving away one of these infrared phones to have a chance to win place a clean non-offensive comment on the youtube comments below to win an infrared phone so they can learn how to fix their cars the fastest way possible and here's some bonus questions and answers. See it now 171 says, Hey Scotty and friends, I've gone through two sets of wiper blades since May. First I got Bosch from AutoZone. Then I got another brand. They just don't last that long. Six and a half months you've been through two sets of wiper blades. Maybe you live in a really dirty area. <laughs> it's just so polluted. All that friction of the dirt wears them out. What you want to do is two things. One, you want to clean your blades every once in a while. I got a video on how to clean them. You can get a little alcohol, mix it 50% alcohol, 50% water, and clean them every once in a while. The other thing is, realize your windshield collects a lot of dust and crud. And as your windshield gets older, they get pitted too. And I found this out years ago. Man, has it saved me a lot of money from buying wiper blades. Polish your windshield three or four times a year. 
I use new finish. People think it's a car wax because you say, oh, wax your car with new finish. Well, new finish isn't technically a wax. Technically, it's a polish. So you get it, and just like waxing your car, you polish your windshield with it. It gets rid of a lot of imperfections. What sold me on polishing with new finish was my wife's Lexus. Yeah, it's an old car. You know, it's 18 years old now. But for years, I kept buying wiper blades, and they worked. But after a short period of time, in a light rain, I go, Rrr? And the noise drove me nuts. I kept buying wiper blades. And then after a few weeks or months, they'd start making that noise again. And one of my uh, fans says, hey, Scotty, you should do like I do. Polish your windshield with new finish. So I did. And guess what? This was years ago. The thing doesn't make any noise now. And it doesn't matter if those blades have been on there for a year and a half. It doesn't make any noise. The very fact that I polished the windshield with that new finish, got rid of all that friction, and not only did the wipers last, but they stopped making that horrible noise. So if I were you, I would polish the windshield with new finish, and if they last, do it three or four times a year. You get a can of the stuff, it'll last you a lifetime if the only thing you're doing is polishing your windshield. And it takes like five minutes to do. Try that first. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.